Hi, I'm Susan Yerkes, and this is Brackenridge Park. Okay, one of the great changes that personally I've seen for the park is the foundation finally of a conservancy like a friends group to kind of guide, shape the park and to uh, raise awareness and also money for private projects. And Lynn Osborne Bobbitt is the executive director of the relatively new Breckenridge Park Conservancy. Um, tell me about how you how you plan to proceed with the yes, Conservancy. Yes, the Conservancy is a growing organization. It was formed in 2009, and it's interesting how it formed. The Conservation Society, a four-sided organization in this community, back in 2005 began uh, noticing the need for an advocacy group to uh, protect and enhance Breckenridge Park. So they created a committee of city leaders and city staff in the Parks Department, as well as other people. One in particular, uh, uh, Betsy Barlow Rogers, a San Antonian, who was in New York and heading up the Central Park Conservancy. So she came down, met with the uh, Conservation Society and the group, and uh, presented a white paper about how to form the Conservancy. And so it, we actually received our 501 C3 status in 2009. Uh, we have a small board of about 15 that uh, work to, as Susan said, raise funds not only to host special events as fundraisers that will generate money to work on projects in the park, but also host events such as Parktoberfest every fall, which brings people into the park to enjoy it and to celebrate the German heritage that this west side of the park is known for. It was property given by Mrs. Emma Kaler in memory of her husband Otto Kaler, who was the owner of San Antonio Brewing Company that owned Pearl Beer. So as in now Pearl Development and Miss Emma Hotel. Uh, so this was about 11 acres that was traditionally a late 1800s family gathering place and the Kalers bought it in 2001 and then uh, Mrs. Kaler donated it in uh, late 2015. And so over 100 years of celebrating the park on this side of the river. And there are other activities, there are such things as that need to be done as restoration of the river walls. These were done in WPA, National Youth Administration days. Uh, they haven't been restored? They have not. The one has just been completed. There are various sections that are uh, some in more need than others, but one just by the train trestle has been completed. But the Conservancy is uh, interested in what other sections of the river, what other infrastructure projects could be included in the 2017 bond. What was the cost to complete that one little section? The one section that was just completed was, I think, less than 100 feet, and it was 560000 However, that contractor did this as a lot of the park because the next estimate that has come in on the uh, near the, the Joski Pavilion, the preliminary estimate to $3 million. Just for the river wall. That one section. Now the city owns the park, but the conservancy is working to make it better. And I understand that after the kind of uh, giant community discussion and some protests that arose about a master plan that was recently completed and then changed because of the city input, I understand that the conservancy is looking at um, a way to really make that whole planning process work more smoothly. Can you talk a little about that? Yes. Uh, I'd like to say just one thing about the Conservancy. Uh, it was, when it was created in 2009, uh, the uh, executive director at that time was Leela Powell, and many of you may know her dad, Boone Powell, and the architecture firm for Powell Carson. She worked diligently to lay the framework on which we are building now. And we, uh, it's given us the, uh, the wherewithal to bring additional people in as special friends to not only raise the visibility of the park, but funds, as you just said. And so one of the things as a result of the master plan draft process underway was to expand the documentation and analysis. I know you want, don't want to talk about one more study. However, there was some information that was lacking. The park, uh, there was human gathering here in Brackenridge, or the area known as Brackenridge, dating back 11,000 years. So 
then you come to the Spanish colonial period, then you come to the late 1800s when uh, Colonel Brackenridge donated property for the first, this as a municipal park, and then on into modern time. So we, the Conservancy, would like to uh, continue with this uh, documentation in the form of a cultural landscape report. And we, will, we are raising funds to, to do this work and think of it as overlaying maps of all of the various cultures here in the park. So you would have a framework from which to move forward before any other decisions are made about changes. It's inevitable that change does take place in a public park. This park has been shaped by its users and so the goal is to look at ways that you can accommodate the visitor, improve the park, take care of deferred maintenance, and maintain the special traditions such as driving into the park and Easter camping. And so what the Conservancy is doing with the work of the Cultural Landscape Report is to provide that common ground for projects that can take place in the future. And one of those is the restoration of the Upper Labor Spanish Colonial Dam and the safety. That's great. And we'll take a look at that. Also, I think you're talking about restoring the mill house. The hopefully and maybe a visitor center for the park. Yes. The, let's go look at that. Let's let's do. Okay, we're standing in front of the office of the Brackenridge Park Conservancy and it will operate uh, as two functions, our official office here in the park, as well as an interim visitor center. We're looking forward to giving guided tours, walking tours, as well as bicycle tours, and perhaps displaying some of the important artifacts that have been found here in the park. Uh, we uh, ha have not had a visitor center that provides information about the history of the park and the city uh, in this location before, so we are thankful to the Nancy Smith Heard Foundation for a major grant to renovate the interior of the building that the city has leased us. And I'd like to thank the Parks Department as well for providing additional funds to finish out the project. So we'll have a small meeting space inside as well as office space and visitor center. The building looks older than it is. It was built in 1979 by the stonemason Curtis Hunt, and it was done for the concessionaire Phil Sheridan. So it wasn't originally a concession uh, building and then later a reservation building for Parks and Recreation Department. Curtis is um, an amazing stonemason, very well known, major projects in San Antonio, and he's a part of restoring the west side of the building and putting additional stonework so we can open up two doors and make them windows. So we are very thankful to all of our sponsors and RBK Architects who's donated the design work. Um, on this side of the park, uh, I'd like to uh, mention that there are particular projects that should and can be done. And uh, at this time, there, the, the Breckenridge Conservancy is proposing and supporting the recommendation of the Parks Department to redo some of the Depression era river walls. You'll see over here to the left where there are, are wood panels holding up the wall and protecting the tree. Uh, this uh, estimate from the old pump house, which was built in 1878, all the way down to the bridge, uh, is uh, estimated to cost $3 million. And with that being done, uh, we could then clean out the silt in the river. Uh, perhaps the pump house foundation can be repaired and the conservancy can then pick it up from the infrastructure work that we are hoping will be in the 2017 bond election and finish out the pump house and open that up to the public. The pump house number one was the original water work system for the city of San Antonio. And Colonel Brackenridge acquired the municipal water works in the late 1870s and operated it into the early 20th century when uh, the city purchased it. There is a raceway that takes the water from the river and then it went into the lower level of the pump house, turned turbines that then pumped the water through the park and then underneath Broadway, then River Avenue, to the reservoir which is at the top, which is now the Botanical Center. 
George W. Brackenridge gave the first donation of the park, 199 acres, in 1899. And it was the uh, east side. It went from pretty much Hildebrand all the way down to Josephine. And, uh, and then a little bit later, he donated what is now known as Monkey Park. He was a very good friend of Mr. Monkey's, and Mr. Monkey was a parks commissioner. And he donated that land to be dedicated to his friend, Mr. Monkey. Uh, Mr. Monkey then became a parks commissioner, and many of the early roads that were put into the park, because you have to remember, that was at the turn of the century when there were still horse carriages, as well as the Model T and new cars that were coming on. So it was very much laid out at that time to be a respite from you know, the hustle and bustle of the, of the big city and come out into nature and enjoy yourselves. And uh, so the, the park itself is listed on the National Register of Historic Places and then there are various features within the park that are separately listed. Standing in Miraflores, this is a piece of property that is now part of Brackenridge Park. It was acquired by Dr. Eurydia in the 1920s. He had immigrated here from Mexico after, during the Mexican Revolution and made San Antonio his home. And he acquired this property that went all the way to Broadway as a, and turned it into a sculpture garden or a pleasure garden. Um, he had originally thought this might be a sanitarium. He had opened a sanitarium in Mexico City. Um, and we have one structure over here that is called Quinta Maria. And we think that perhaps that was the beginning of it, but then the depression came and no more structures were built. However, he worked with Dionisio Rodriguez, who was here in San Antonio doing faux bois, or reinforced concrete work that is made to look like trees and um, it's made out of cement. And he uh, employed Mr. Rodriguez to do the palapa that you're seeing, benches. There's a hollow log over here, as well as bringing in additional uh, uh, artists to do other pieces of work. He brought pottery from the Puebla area, Talavera pottery. And you'll look over here to my right, you'll see the gates that have just recently been done. Uh, the Parks Department and the Conservation Society have been working closely to redo this area and uh, the gates and lighting have just been finished. Um, as of October 1, uh, there will be work beginning on a walkway starting at the end of this bridge to go into Miraflores, uh, a walkway around Dr. Eurydia that you see and then over to the uh, gateway or, or entryway and uh, perhaps then the, the Parks Department can open this on an as-guided basis and the Conservancy is interested in giving guided tours. There is a master plan for this piece of property which is separate from the master plan that's been discussed uh, for the remainder of the acres of, of Brackenridge um, and this was done in 2007 and the intent was and still is to restore it as a pleasure garden along the river and interpret its many um, assets. So we hope soon to be able to do guided tours and work with the Parks Department to do that. What the Conservancy is interested in facilitating is the removal of invasive plantings and plants and trees that are growing within the river channel. Uh, anybody interested, we'd love to have you come aboard and help do this. Uh, we, of course, would coordinate with the Parks Department, but as you can see, there is great need to take out what is not appropriate for this area and, and, and have a you know, tree planting program. Perhaps garden clubs, others, master gardeners could adopt sections of the river to get this done and support the, the Parks and Recreation Department with their to-do list.